I've completely replaced Photoshop with Pixelmator Pro and today I'm going to show you my 7 favorite features. Now before we get into it I wanted to tell you my 2 reasons why I actually got rid of my Adobe subscription. And those are number 1 the monthly subscription plan that you cannot cancel without the downside and number 2 is the laggy clunky UI that is just hard to use. Ok with that out of the way I still want to address one more thing and that's Affinity Photo. I know there are probably going to be a bunch of you telling me that oh Affinity is the superior program to Pixelmator because it has a lot more features that are similar to Photoshop. But then again, I'm not looking for a Photoshop replacement. I'm just looking for something that can make my job as creating thumbnails or editing a few photos here and there way easier and way more convenient from a user perspective. So I feel like considering the things that I'm looking for, Pixelmator was just the right choice here. So let me show you the features that I was talking about. My first favorite feature has to be when you open up Pixelmator Pro and you create a new document, it gives you a bunch of presets that are actually actually useful and look good. I especially like going down here into the mockup section, you have a bunch of choices of Apple devices and then if you're trying to show off some poster or a print to a client, then you can go for one of these. Now as you might have noticed, my layout over here is quite different from what you're used to in Photoshop or in any kind of other program. This is because Pixelmator lets you pretty much customize every single detail here. If you for example don't like my layout that I have going on here because quite frankly it's quite weird, you can head up to Pixelmator Pro, go to settings and now when you switch over to workspace you can choose one of the default ones or even create your own layout like I have. Once you have positioned your tools, your properties and your layers, you can also customize these sections themselves. So if I head over into these three dots and I hit customize tools, I now have a bunch of choices to choose from and I can even expand this to show the little spaces that I have in between these tools to have them grouped with similar tools in the same section. So as you can see there are a ton of tools here that you can choose from and once you hit done you can also customize the tools up here in the toolbar. There are other AI related tools up here like for example select subject, remove background and super resolution which I use quite often. These are especially useful if you just want to select something and add it into another image. So let's say that I wanted to take a screenshot of my Final Cut Pro logo down here. So I would simply hit command shift 4 and now just go around the Final Cut Pro now throw it into the document and as you can see it is invisible because I need to move it to the top of the layers. Let's make it a little bit larger so we can see and now the first thing you notice it's quite blurry. Well super resolution can fix that for us. So I would just hit the shortcut right up here. It's going to take a second for the algorithms to do its thing and as you can see if you can on YouTube, then the left side is our original image and the right side is our super resolution image. So I no longer have to look around the internet for some quality picture of the Final Cut Pro logo, instead I can just use super resolution and this is going to do the job just fine. Now let's say that I wanted the logo itself without this background that I have going on here. The logical first step that you might figure out is just to remove the background. So let me hit that and now it does the thing and we have a nice Final Cut Pro logo that's actually usable. When I zoom in, you can see that the edges aren't quite right, but you can always just refine the selection and make it way better yourself. But for a quick background removal, I think it did a pretty good job. Now this next selection tool is something that I haven't seen in any other editing program. There might be somewhere something similar to this, but I just haven't seen it. So once I grab this selection tool, which is the color selection, and I now just drag it along, it will have a tolerance to what it picks up and as you can see if I have a tolerance of like one it's just going to select the exact same color as it has but if I drag it out it will select more and more of the image until well it selects the entire image and this same tolerance slider works with for example the paint bucket so I will just change my primary color to something blue so we can notice a difference and now when I drag along with the bucket itself it will do the whole tolerance thing once again like the color picker that we just had. Now the next favorite feature of mine when it comes to Pixelmator is really something that Photoshop lacks in my opinion and that's the smoothness and fluidity of the entire interface. As you can see the whole design of Pixelmator is kind of Apple-like and I do like that it just flows into the ecosystem and many small actions that you perform in Pixelmator have these quite subtle animations that you might not even notice but once you do they're pretty nice. So for example with the paint bucket if I just click on a surface it will do this nice expanding animation and I really like the 
these little touches that just make it a little bit more friendlier. Now, one of the tools that I didn't really like at the beginning when trying out Pixelmator for the first time was the quick selection tool. I found it a bit weird how it works, how it just highlights the area that it's going to select, and then you have to kind of drag across the area, and I found it super different to anything else on the market. But as I've used it, I got really quick with it. Like for example, I just made the selection of this shadow of this table, and now when I zoom in a bit, by the way, by holding just the option and then if I want to move, I can just hold down spacebar. And now if I wanted to get rid of this little thing, I can just hold it up there until it's highlighted across the section. Now, while I have option pressed down, you can see that the little plus changes to minus. So it will just delete that part of the selection. And you can be super quick with this of just selecting things that you really want. One thing that I just recently discovered is that your selection is shared across all of your selection tools. So let's say that I wanted to select this whole plant over here, but I didn't really want to use the quick selection tool because it's going to be quite finicky to do so but I just need a kind of rough selection so I'm just going to grab my free selection tool and just draw around it and now once I finish let's make it just a little bit shorter it will actually add it to the same selection as this one so if I now go for example for my bucket again and I click on this selection it's going to fill both of these in now this last feature that I wanted to show you today is probably also my favorite Pixelmator just remembers all of your shape settings so if I for example just go into a rounded rectangle and create one you can see that it already has a gradient because these are the settings that I used last time so let's say that we wanted to add a stroke as well this blue over here and let's change up the fill to this this is a pretty nice looking shape and we can also boost the shadow so it's a bit more noticeable change the degree of shadow and now it's a pretty good rectangle but let's say that I wanted to create another shape so I will just head into my shape section and now in the properties I can choose any of these shapes literally anything like let's say this donut for example and it's going to adapt all of those settings so now when I draw a donut it's already going to have all of the properties that the rectangle had before it also works with for example making a line it will just do the line without the fill itself and it will also work for the pen tool so if you want to make custom shapes just like this and maybe angle it like that and make it full then you can draw your own shapes and it's going to remember all of those settings now to balance the video out a bit and also to make it not seem like a sponsored video because quite frankly it isn't i'm not getting paid for this i'm just super pumped about this program I wanted to tell you some of its downsides and the only two that I could think of of the last two to three months that I've been using it, which is number one, it doesn't really have any of the AI generation features, which the newest version of Photoshop has, which I don't know about you, but I didn't really use it in Photoshop, so it isn't a big deal for me. And the second thing, which would be quite nice if they added in the next update, is a dedicated glow effect. Because if I want to create a glow right now, let's say that I wanted to create a glow around this rectangle angle that I have created just now. I would need to just hit Control J to replicate it, select the layer that's underneath it. Most of the time I would like to also disable the shadow for the second layer and now just go to effects. You have many effects that you can choose from over here, but I would just choose one of the blurs, let's say the classic Gaussian blur, and now just increase the radius, and this would give it a glow. Now, if I wanted it to pop a bit more, I could just head into color adjustments and adjust the saturation, for example, and also play around with the brightness slider, the exposure slider, and the highlights to make it a bit more visible. But those are pretty much the only two downsides that I've found so far. Anything else just works perfectly, and it's super easy to use, especially compared to something like Photoshop. Now, in terms of the pricing model of Pixelmator Pro, it's just 50 bucks one time, and it quite often goes on sale, mainly during the back to school days, and then on the new years, it goes down to around 30 bucks. So I feel like if you finally want to escape the Adobe subscription hell, then Pixelmator is quite a good choice, especially with the discount. But even if you buy it for 50 bucks like I did, I think it's really good. So that's gonna be it for today. Hopefully you enjoyed. And if you have any other Mac apps that I should definitely check out in the future, please let me know. And I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.